Okay, good morning everyone. My name is Alistair Smith. I'm an EPSRC Fellow and Lecturer in Civil Engineering at Loughborough University. My presentation is about uh, an ongoing program of research titled Listening to Infrastructure, which aims to develop early warning systems for infrastructure deterioration. We're using acoustic emission, which is very well established in many industries, but less so in geotechnical engineering, and it's often seen as quite wacky because we're essentially listening to particles moving. So I'll start by providing a background and a brief history of the research. I'll then explain what acoustic emission is, how it's generated, how it propagates, and how it's measured. I'll then provide an overview of the monitoring and warning system that we're developing, and then I'll present some full-scale testing that was done at Queen's University in Canada to demonstrate the potential of the technique. So for my PhD, I worked on the development of early warning systems for landslides, which used acoustic emission monitoring. They were called slope alarms and community slope safe, and they've now recently been licensed and commercialized by RST Instruments, and they've produced a product called Geoacoustic Aware. And alongside this, I've been developing a new research area called Listening to Infrastructure, which aims to apply the learning that we developed in um, slope stability monitoring and apply that to infrastructure <coughs> monitoring. So we're applying it to a range of geotechnical assets. So why monitor? What's the motivation? Well, if we can assess, uh, assess condition and detect deterioration, we'll be able to facilitate asset management and early warning of limit states, which will enable evacuation of vulnerable people and timely repair and maintenance of critical infrastructure. There's an urgent need for low-cost uh, sensing technologies that can be retrofitted to existing aging assets to detect, quantify, and interpret accelerating deformation behavior that accompanies progressive ground, ground failure processes. Other nascent technologies such as fiber optics provide valuable information, but retrofitting hundreds of thousands of kilometers of assets with these sorts of technologies would be prohibitively intrusive and expensive. So these are the, uh, some examples of the range of uh, assets that we're looking at. So we've developed the approach for slopes. We're also looking at differential ground movement impacting on buried pipelines, cyclic loading of offshore monopiles, and seepage erosion in dams. Uh, a key difference between the application to slopes and buried infrastructure is that with slopes, we need to install a waveguide into the ground to provide a low attenuation propagation path to get the signals from, from that are generated at depth. Whereas the buried infrastructure, we can use existing structural elements that are already in the ground, such as buried pipelines, and we can couple sensors to the wall of the pipeline and listen, essentially listen to soil structure interaction. So these are the, the key AE generation mechanisms in geotechnical assets. So we have soil deformation behavior, so energy dissipation due to friction, particle rearrangement, and things like that. Uh, soil structure interaction and seepage erosion. These are the, the, the general mechanisms that I'm focusing on in this, this presentation. So acoustic emission is high frequency stress waves, and this is really important because it means we can filter out all of the low frequency environmental and background noise that's generated by construction activity and traffic. Um, it propagates long distances in structural elements like steel pipelines, which means that it's an exciting opportunity to couple sensors at discrete locations to listen to all of the soil structure interaction behavior in between the sensor positions. These are the key elements of uh, an acoustic emission measurement system. So we have the sensor, which is usually a piezoelectric sensor, which converts the mechanical vibration to an electrical signal which is then amplified and filtered to improve the signal-to-noise ratio and then converted to a digital signal and then processed. Um, there's lots of um, uh, different, for a variety of different ways to process and analyze the acoustic signal. For example, on the left there, we have joint time frequency analysis. Uh, on the right, I'm presenting uh, ring down counts and all of the results that are presented in the, the presentation uh, in, in future slides are ring down counts. And they're the number of times the waveform crosses a pre-programmed voltage threshold level. Uh, and they're sort of proportional to the energy, the area under the curve. And the key benefit of using ring down counts is that they require less processing and storage requirements because you don't have to digitally reconstruct the entire high frequency waveform, which is really important if you're trying to design and build a uh, battery operated sensor that can operate for long durations in the field. So we, we embarked on an extensive program of element testing to enhance understanding of the acoustic emission generated um, by soil behavior and soil structure interaction. So we did a lot of triaxial tests, and these are results from uh, a test on dense sands. And in this test, we increased the uh, axial displacement rate uh, from one millimeter per hour to three and then to six. And you can see 
that we did that when post-peak conditions were established, and you can see that the acoustic emission rates increase proportionally with the applied displacement rates, which gives us an indication that we can use this to detect accelerating deformation behavior. We also did some interface shear testing between granular soils and steel, steel plates, um, and you can see some results here um, of shear stress versus displacement and acoustic emission rates versus displacement. And you can see that there's a, a comparable relationship between acoustic emission and mobilized shear strength. We also then did some step tests where we gradually increased the rate of shearing in, in, in steps, and that's the black line. And the red line there is the acoustic emission rates. And again, you can see there's a nice relationship between acoustic emission rates and the, the rate of movement, the rate of displacement. So proportions of the energy dissipated in particulate materials and soil structure systems are converted to heat and sound, and it's the high-frequency components of the sound energy that is acoustic emission. And through the body of work that we've done and through other groups around the world, we've been able to identify all of the variables that, um, that, that govern the acoustic emission generated by pipe-soil interaction. So the A generation rate per unit length is a function of the pipe diameter because this controls the surface area in contact with, with, with the soil, the interface properties, the soil properties and state, the normal effective stress, the mobilized shear strength, and the strain rate. We've also done an extensive program of full-scale te full, full tests and numerical simulations to understand propagation and attenuation in, in buried structures. This is a bit more complex. So the attenuation is a function of the pipe geometry, so the diameter and wall thickness, the joint uh, properties and spacings, the, the frequency and mode type of the propagating wave, and then the density, Young's modulus, and Poisson's ratio of the external environment, which is the soil, the pipe itself, and the internal environment, which could be water or petroleum products. This presents a, an illustration of the listening to infrastructure concept. So here, uh, bedrock faulting is causing a concentrated shear zone to develop in the soil, which propagates upwards and outwards. And this deforms the buried pipe, which generates acoustic emission, which propagates as guided waves along the pipeline. So acoustic emission is generated by the deforming soil structure system. A propagates as guided waves along the structural elements. It's then measured, and then warnings are communicated to, to decision makers. So we've done lots of element scale testing to understand, uh, to get an appreciation for the different variables that influence the acoustic commission generated, but we wanted to do a full scale demonstration of the potential of the technique to, to detect, um, to, to monitor buried pipe deformation. So we worked with Ian Moore at Queen's University in Canada using their buried infrastructure research facility. And what, the, these are photographs of a split box apparatus. So this is to impose differential ground motion on buried, buried structures. Um, so this is seven meters long, two meters wide, two meters high. Um, it has dense sand, friction treatment on the walls, etc. We used uh, lots of instrumentation in addition to the acoustic emission sensors to get an appreciation for the mechanical behavior, so strain gauges, fiber optic strain sensing, um, linear potentiometers, and automatic total station monitoring of an array of targets on the ground surface. So this is a schematic of the test box. So you can see the moving floor moves downwards relative to the, station, relative to the stationary floor. And this is the imposed mechanism. So at the displacement discontinuity at the base of the, the moving floor, a concentrated shear zone develops at the base of the soil body, which propagates upwards and outwards with further increments of displacement. And this causes bending to develop in the pipeline. The soil's uplift capacity is le less than its uh, bearing capacity, so we get uplift failure first in the pipe sagging zone, uh, which looks like this inverted trapezoidal block. This is particularly for dense sands with shallow burial. These are some photographs taken, well, this is a photograph taken from the end of a test with 0.6 meters of burial, and you can see the fault rupture shear zone and the uplift shear zones parallel to the pipe. Okay, so these are measurements taken from that, that same test. So the 0.6 meters of burial, a total dis relative displacement, moving floor displacement of 80 millimeters. The displacement was, um, was applied in increments of 10 millimeters. And in each st test stage, the rate of movement was varied. It was changed. So we could investigate if we could quantify the rate of movement as well as the magnitude of movement with acoustic emission. 
So the green line here is displacement against time, and the red line is cumulative acoustic emission against time. And you, you can see that we get a nice comparable uh, re uh, relationship. And when they're plotted against each other, they look like this. So this is cumulative AE plotted against displacement. And you can see there's a distinct transition in behavior after around 10 millimeters of displacement. So the insert there zooms in on the first 10 millimeters of displacement, and you can see that acoustic emission does start to generate when the fault rupture propagates to the pipe elevation, uh, but the magnitude of the AE is significantly lower than later test stages. This is the average acoustic emission rate during each test stage plotted against the applied displacement rate in each test stage, and you can see that we get a lovely linear relationship when we exclude stage one. So what happened in stage one? So this is the ring down counts generated per millimeter of displacement in each test stage. And you can clearly see there's a distinct change between stage one and subsequent stages. Our current interpretation is that this, because the predicted magnitude of displacement to, um, to reach peak uplift resistance was 10 millimeters or 12 millimeters in this case, we, we, we are, um, our interpretation is that peak uplift was mobilized and then in subsequent test stages, displacement was controlled by the inverted trapezoidal block. Okay, so to summarize, an ongoing program of research titled Listening to Infrastructure aims to develop a continuous real-time AE monitoring system that can be distributed at discrete locations along buried pipelines to sense pipe soil interaction and provide early warning of adverse behavior. The key variables that influence AE generation and propagation have been uh, identified and are being quantified. And results from differential ground mov movement experiments performed on buried pipes at Queen's University in Canada have demonstrated that pipe soil interaction generated acoustic emission contains information that can be used to interpret mechanical behavior. Thank you very much. <laughs>